Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone here. Uh, some of you I haven't seen since the last time. Uh, others of you we've been talking every two weeks since the last one. Uh, but I think we're all looking forward to uh, a terrific program. Uh, my job uh, for the first 10 minutes is to uh, inform you what is expected of you because uh, everyone here has a role to play in the success of the meeting. Uh, and then I'll give you the uh, answer to the secret question, why 2035? Uh, that's the last year in the roadmap uh, as we've written it so far, but it has other significance as well. So uh, we're focusing on integrated photonics uh, because it really does represent a major technology transition to distributed systems because we just can't go any faster with individual components. We need to think about system design so system function is a critical path. We find everything gets better when you integrate. You cut down the number of interfaces. Everything gets smaller. Power dissipation is smaller. Speed goes up and so forth, as well as functionality. And lastly, for the silicon platform, the envisioned high volume manufacturing is where it shines. And so we'll look at the transition between where we are today and where uh, high volume manufacturing is. These are the success factors. So we have briefings from the world leaders in all of the areas that uh, we have picked. And I'll go over a little bit of the emphases on the keynote speakers in just a minute. But they're here not to talk because they can talk anywhere. They're here because they want the interaction of this audience. And this particular forum is one with its breakouts and with the questions uh, that we have after the talks is one where we can get feedback and begin to converge because individual thinking is only a piece of the big picture. So the roadmap objective is to define a vector of alignment all the way from materials uh, to uh, end users. So materials, tools, components, and systems are all represented here. And then at the end, uh, system uh, providers like data centers uh, and so forth are uh, ones that, uh, whose needs we want to be aware of and meet, and we'll have breakouts on application interest groups that'll focus on that. So the meeting, as I said, has a community focus. And we'll have surveys throughout the meeting asking you for your input, and we'll make adjustments at the meeting and make adjustments into the future. Uh, we ask that you engage with the speakers uh, in any way that, uh, that you see fit and by uh, all means contribute in the breakouts. So it was a long path to get here. Uh, th this particular forum has been doing roadmaps since 1997. Uh, the first one was commissioned by OIDA, Optical Electronics Industry Association, asking for why is all of the optical electronic manufacturing in Japan at the time? And, uh, and that report took a look at what the manufacturing issues were, uh, particularly the nature of the uh, small cottage industry type approach that we had in the US versus a, a more global manufacturing approach that they were taking in Japan at the time. Then uh, the first big roadmap was 2005. Uh, the next one was in 2009, uh, which really began uh, a lot of industry involvement. Uh, and then 2010 to 2015, a number of small roadmaps focusing on particular research topics such as energy, systems optimization, and so forth. And then the, uh, the more formal roadmap started in 2005, uh, the photonic system manufacturing roadmap, then IPSR 2016, which you all have a copy of, and then the updates to 2017, which Bob Paul will announce uh, uh, later in this meeting. So uh, this is where we are now, and I'll give you an idea of what we have to do to continue uh, this productivity. Next slide. So the mission that was adopted formally in 2011 for this particular meeting, and at that time it was called the Communication Technology Roadmap, is that this meeting would be the primary initiative of the industry consortium associated with the MIT Microphotonics Center. It would bring together academic and industry specialists, so the top thinkers in the field, 
looking at photonic hardware and data communications at that time. Uh, the research and the results of the particular meeting and the roadmap that we had was to examine, anticipate, prioritize, and measure market demands, gaps, and technology barriers to realizing uh, an integrated photonics functionality, and then assigning time frames and engineering milestones. And so when you bring together the top thinkers in the field, you expect something should come out of it. And the roadmap is a way that kept the discipline for us to be productive rather than just have a meeting where we talk and then go home. So let's think about the keynotes that we have. The first four at the top are the four large, uh, maybe the world's largest consortia associated uh, with government-sponsored integrated photonics. The first one, which is the first talk, is Victories. The VI stands for Vertically Integrated, and it's looked at telecom. It started 10 years ago. This is the 10th anniversary, and the end, the final, I think it ends uh, April 2nd, formally. Is that correct, Sue? Yes, ma'am. So uh, uh, we'll hear what they achieved. It was the first consortium focusing on uh, silicon photonics at large scale, uh, and they've had a, a, a very productive set of milestones going all the way from individual components uh, to uh, network architecture. Uh, the PETRA, uh, also known as the uh, PECST -E program uh, in Japan, followed about five years later. Uh, Professor Arakawa will talk about that. And it was a f it's the first uh, government program to formally spin off a company. And we'll hear about their company, AIO Core uh, Limited, uh, which is a, uh, a short reach transceiver that uh, was a product of the uh, research done in that program. Next is UKSP, uh, uh, United Kingdom Silicon Photonics Program. And Graham Reed is here to bring us up to date on that. And they're doing some very innovative research in electronic photonic integration in order to get better uh, performance out of components. Uh, not just circuits. And then lastly, AIM, uh, Mike Lair is here, and each one of these speakers is the leader of the particular program. Uh, Mike will bring us up to date on AIM, which has only been in business about two and a half years. So you figure a startup in two and a half years, I think we'll be very impressed with what he has to tell us. Right. ASM America, uh, we'll have the uh, uh, CEO of ASM America, Sam Basad, talking about uh, the tools and their role in getting uh, CPK for uh, the production of integrated photonics. Uh, ASM America makes the standard tool for germanium in, uh, in the industry, uh, a germanium CVD tool. We'll hear from Infanera, Air Labs, and Juniper about integration. Uh, Infanera systems on a chip, Air Labs electronic photonic integration for computing, and Juniper integration not only at the chip level, but in a chipset and into the package level and how uh, a standard package has been created in that sense. We heard from University of Sydney on uh, the world's record in RF performance for photonic circuits uh, and, uh, and how they did it and what the prospects are of getting that monolithically integrated on one chip. It uses two pieces of monolithic integration to get there and uh, what are the prospects for getting there all the way. Uh, then we'll hear uh, keynotes before the application interest group uh, breakouts from 3M and Molex on the, uh, the first application interest group looking at onboard uh, photonic interconnection. And then we'll hear from Technical University at Eindhoven about the uh, joining together of our roadmap with the European roadmap uh, and uh, particularly uh, what's going on uh, with the, uh, the joining of the meetings and uh, uh, advances in their twig and test. And then lastly, we'll hear from uh, Loop Capital. This is the fourth year that Jim Kistner has come here. Every year we learn something about ourselves that somehow we missed uh, looking in the mirror. Uh, he predicted consolidation three years ago. Uh, he predicted 3D uh, a year ago. And uh, his talk this year is called Silicon Photonics Bell of the Ball. So I have no idea what he's going to tell us about, but it sounds like it'll be interesting. And so this gives us an idea of a, of a target uh, that we have committed ourselves to, and uh, you can keep this in mind as we go. 
2035, so let's start focusing on that. Uh, if we continue on the performance over cost vector that was established for telecom, high performance computing, and data centers, uh, the, uh, the rate of that learning curve is about a million X every 20 years, a thousand X every year. So uh, Harm Doran, who is no longer with us, uh, but when he was part of the roadmap, uh, talked about uh, how we could project this forward, and he put this plot together, uh, dollar per gigabit per second per year, and if we focus ahead in 2012 is when he put this together, uh, he's predicting in 2022 that uh, we'd be almost at one cent per gigabit per second, and it would be the equivalent of a 48-point rack interconnecting at 400 gigabits per second uh, per channel at a cost of $400, okay? So think about it and think about the fact that 2022 is not that far away. Okay, and then finally, uh, where does 2020, uh, 2035 come from? Well, it started actually with the Victories Project, which took a look at the power consumption of electricity in Japan and, uh, and just projected where the IP router consumption would be. And by 2020, 2035, all of the electrical power generation in Japan would be geared toward just running IP routers in their telecom network. So they had a pretty good case that something had to be done and, uh, and, uh, and as we'll see, they've done something on that. So that was, that was the doomsday prediction uh, 10 years ago. Uh, then we look at uh, performance over cost and where we're going. And this is something that uh, John McWilliams put together looking at uh, the challenges that we face in integrated photonics. So we need to keep reducing cost in relatively mature technologies. So where is, where is that cost reduction going to come from? And particularly if we're going to be moving to platforms such as silicon, we need high volume manufacturing applications. And we need to move away from 100K up to 10 million uh, type units. Uh, those of us who were at OFC a week ago uh, noticed a real change in tenor from thinking about data centers as being the key driver, and Mike Lehrer and I were discussing this, are data centers gonna be sufficient to drive integrated photonics into high volume? And we both concluded, probably not. Uh, everyone at OFC began to think about the fact that consumer applications are gonna be the driver. And uh, uh, applications such as 3D imaging, uh, in mobile devices and so forth are huge drivers. And they're already beginning to say, you, you have to increase the wafer size in order to get to production or we're not gonna be able to invest in you as a vendor. So the manufacturing supply chain is beginning to fall into place. But if we look at that, uh, uh, just to close at a high level, this sort of predicts that there's gonna be chaos uh, for the next few years. Uh, as John puts it, an existing hodgepodge of proprietary company-specific uh, and uh, standard interconnect designs will fulfill existing applications at very high cost. And then as you sort of move down, that the, you get standards of where they will work and where they are clearly demonstrate performance advantages, heterogeneous applications, and then finally monolithic uh, in the 2025-2035 regime. So, we're trying to look to the end of the roadmap as we can see it now and try to predict what needs to be done to get there. And, uh, and that's the subject of the meeting today. So welcome uh, to MIT. Welcome to uh, the uh, 2018 spring meeting. And I'm looking forward to it. I'll turn it over to, to uh, Alan uh, to introduce the first session.